music, um, playing in bars around Nashville, Tennessee. And after playing in local drinkeries for several years, Blake worked with his band Buffalo Ford to record an album titled, titled Home and Heart. He, along with his band, was fortunate enough to record a track at the Blackbird Studios in Nashville and has opened up for artists such as Big and Rich, which is awesome. Um, so we're really excited to have him play for us today and um, take it away, Blake. Thank you very much. This song is called um, Happy Illustrated. Hope you enjoy it. Get lost in the day to day. It's melancholy. It's evening news way of thinking. Caught up in the doom and gloom without a second to hear the thoughts that I'm thinking. But I'm taking a second here to celebrate that we're always six feet above the grave. Is that it's okay? I'm not gonna be mourning in the morning for the day that is coming. This is our simple mission. Love and listen, and we seem to be in this hand. If I'm smiling, I ain't thinking no, just happy illustrated. Happy illustrated. So if I could paint a picture to the career of your boots, tell me what would be on it. Are you painting Rocky Mountain skies, with walls way up high? sunset upon them so what's keeping you from leaving now tell me honest is paradise that far away on a sunny day i'm not gonna be mourning in the morning for the day that is coming this is our simple mission love and listen and we seem to be missing if i'm smiling i ain't thinking no just happy illustrated I'm happy illustrated yeah. i don't i don't I don't want to be mourning. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be mourning. Morning. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be mourning. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be mourning. Morning. In the evening when the sun goes down, take a look around. What does surround you? You looking into youthful eyes, the walls are way up high. But you work to surround you. Just know that we've a common goal to feed a simple soul. To say at the end of the day, it's gonna be okay. I'm not gonna be morning in the morning. For the day that is coming, this is a simple mission. Love and listen, and we seem to be in this end. And if I'm smiling, I ain't faking no, just a happy illustrated. Happy illustrated. It. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you very Round much. of applause for Blake. That was a great way to start off our event. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Appreciate and if you that. want to um, drop any of your social media information in the chat so we can all keep in touch with your future music, that would be uh, awesome too. I don't, uh, my, I don't even know what my Instagram is, to be honest. <laughs> If you, if you, if you uh, Instagram search Blake Perkins, I don't even know what it is. I'm hardly on social media anymore. But if something You'll get a big following after this event. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you again for performing. That was great. Thank you. Um, next up, we have Katie Bannister. 
performing some poetry for us. Um, a little bit of background on Katie. She is a speaker, author, poet, actor, and disability educator. With her husband, Steve, she co-founded Access for All with a mission to educate and empower people with and without disabilities. Katie has authored Katie's Aunt Katie's Visit, The Personal Care Attendant Guide, A Pocket of Poems, Karmic Validations, and Beauty in the Loo are collections of songs and poetry. She has many honors, including Miss Wheelchair Missouri in 2010, 2001 St. Louis Woman of Achievement, and Missouri JC's 1998 10 Outstanding Young Missourians and many more. Um, so we're very excited to hear her poems and Katie, whenever you're ready, go for it. I got a thing on the screen. It says unmute un mute myself. So do I click that? We can all hear you. Okay, okay good. Um, hi everybody. Um, every day th starts with a thought and my thoughts, it, it, they were getting a little bit darker and I was getting a little stressed by what's going on with the with the quarantine and everything. I mean, I was okay in March and April, then came May, June, and July, and um, I, I hope for an ending. Um, and I hope that we can get to some semblance of where we once were. But until then, and even after, I have a four coping point strategy where I feel it, think it, write it, say it. And when I practice all four of those, um, on a regular basis, my, my life gets a little bit easier to manage and it can be helpful. I, um, I was diagnosed with depression about two months after my accident. Um, that was 30 years ago. And um, it, depression comes in waves, it comes and goes. Uh, it's very manageable now, but it still happens. And um, I don't want any pity and I know every person I'm looking at on the screen wants no pity either. This group of people are, you look wonderful. And, and I can't wait to hear everybody's story too and their, and their art, pieces of art. Um, so I wrote um, recently, um, The Quarantine Blues. And uh, here goes. We are stuck inside, I sit inside. I must qualify that all need try. The virus likes to fry. To crowds we say goodbye. Do more than sit and cry with pain we can't deny. Time idles going by, we can no longer sit on the side. Make sure you say hi so no one be denied. I wish that we could fly soaring low and high. We know the moment's nigh, a monumental sky. Abundant clouds are in the sky. We keep asking and wondering why. Go ahead now, don't be shy. Your tongue is desert dry. We could sit and claim, oh my, every girl and every guy no longer has to lie. The illness is the spy. The germs like to pry, affecting all our lives, slinking ever sly, attention it will buy. I'll have a slice of pie. I don't like breads of rye. As I gaze upon the sky, I'm not ready to die. I find that when I take what I'm feeling in my thoughts um, and I just put them on a piece of paper, sometimes it comes easily, sometimes it takes a while, but this virus can't win. And doing things like this will, will keep, up, keep the virus from winning, being creative, being productive. And I'm working on my, fourth, uh, my fifth book um, called On a Roll, How It Feels to Be on Wheels. And um, it's, talks about my four point coping strategy. And so that's in the midst of being finished up. So I'll just keep writing and I'll feel it, think it, write it and say it. Thanks guys. Thank you so much for that, Katie. Much applause. Um, I think your poem was super relatable for everyone given the coronavirus and how everyone's feeling. So thank you for writing and sharing your feelings that we all can relate to. Um, again, if you would like to share any of your work or your websites in the chat so that other people can um, find and read your work, feel free to do so. 
So just go on and click on the chat and then I can type whatever in there. Okay. Yep, exactly. Thanks again. You're welcome. Um, now we'll move on to Ken Palmer. A little background about Ken. Um, he lives in Los Angeles and he is a member of the Actors Gang Theater Company since 1996. Last summer, he played Duke Kaboom, Canada's greatest stuntman in Toy Story Tempest. He starred on the TV shows Baskets and No Activity. He is in the band New Mongrels and is part of the Super Broke Superhero Marching Band Ensemble. When his son's elementary school was shut down by the pandemic, they started singing songs and he'll perform an original today. So whenever you're ready, Ken, the floor is yours. Oh, well, thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, they, uh, I didn't have anything to say, you know, when the school shut down. Um, we were like looking for heroes and hope. And uh, so we just started writing a song. And, um, uh, my son uh, accompanied me me on the piano, but he's, he's not, he's not live, I guess. But uh, so he's, uh, he's nine. And now he's 10. So all right, here we go. I want to stay up all night, but I've been up all day. Stay up all night, but the bed's in the way. Under the covers, we chose to self-quarantine. Our sleep number bed is set to fight COVID-19. Man, weeks and weeks of distancing, and I still haven't shaved, but it's not how you look, it's how you feel, and I feel marvelous. <laughs> I'm just a Billy Crystal City sucker from Pittsburgh, PA, waving this terrible virus away. Matt Damon is contagious. He's infecting young minds to stay home and play with their friends online. Steve Martin's banjo bowfinger is picking a fight. Live from New York, it's a Saturday flight. Canadians no longer toss out their TVs, not with Eugene Levy from Messy TV. Let's put on Letterman's worldwide pants and roll up our sleeves. We can do this together with love in between us until we no longer have this disease. I'll stay zero feet from my family, six feet from my friends, six feet from riding in an ambulance. I'm six feet from strangers outside Trader Joe's. But don't buy me lilies. I'm not ready to go. No, we bought Nerf guns at Big Five. New rival Nerf guns, fun guns, safe guns, dinner with the Gaffigans. Conan's podcast, Steve Colbert, is helping us fix our bike flats. The fox hike Jimmy Kimmel, just want to say that. Your kickstand may rattle as you jump off the curb. Six from a neighbor, us and Getty must swerve. We grab essential Chipotle. At home, we must eat. The unprotected bike lane is now the whole street. I said the unprotected bike lane is now the whole street. Wild animal tweets about goats and sheep roaming like zombies on their cell phones crossing the street. Six from a country with a language I don't speak. I should get that app from Duolingo, learn it in a week because we are the world, we are under attack. Too many loved ones were stopping their tracks. Too many loved ones. I'll say zero feet from my family, six feet from my friends. Six feet from riding in an ambulance, I'm six feet from strangers outside Trader Joe's. But don't buy me lilies, I'm not ready to go. No, we bought a Nintendo Switch, delivered next day freight. No, you won't be sending me home in a wooden crate. We built a stay-to-home shelter. On Minecraft, there's an animal crossing raccoon in my path. But I'm not cashing in my bells, I'm building an axe. Are we walking in the footsteps? I'll stay zero feet from my family, six feet from my friends. Six feet from riding in an ambulance. I'm six feet from strangers outside Trader Joe's. 
But don't buy me lilies, I'm not ready to go. That was great. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you for sharing. Uh, very unexpected, but in the best way. I loved it. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ken. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, next up, we have Ashley Osen. A little background about Ashley. At 14, she was paralyzed in a car accident. While that one moment transformed her entire world, it did not dampen her spirit. She never forgot her love for travel. And in 2006, she founded wheelchairtraveling.com to empower people with limited mobility to access the world of leisure and adventure travel. And today she's going to share a story from one of her travel experiences. Yes, when I saw this, I thought it would be a good time to share kind of one of my more crazy travel stories that just recently happened to me in New Zealand. So I was in New Zealand right before everything was, was shut down and I had an absolutely amazing time. I, I was pretty much not oblivious to what was going on, but I definitely wasn't as affected compared to the rest of the world being on, on lockdown and um, definitely feeling more of the pandemic. Um, I was driving around, had a great time, uh, accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish, which is terrific. And on the second to last day that I was in New Zealand, I had done everything that I needed to do. And I said, okay, I'm gonna go to the coast. So I drove to the coast. I just pointed my finger on, on the map, drove to the coast. Wasn't much for me to do there. And so I kind of pointed my finger on the map and I'm like, I'm going to go to this lake right here. And so I put it that in my GPS and started driving to the lake and got to the lake. It was beautiful. Um, it took a while to get to the lake. Um, it was a, a dirt road, um, a dirt and rocky road. Um, mainly dirt, you know, packed dirt, you know, just one of these old one lane um, roads. I had been on on these roads quite a bit in New Zealand, so it wasn't anything new, but the road was very, very exceptionally long. And um, so I went there, uh, didn't spend a lot of time there, um, maybe like an hour or so. And I wanted to get back to the hotel so I could pack, have an early dinner, um, you know, have a good night's sleep so I could wake up the next day to get on my flight. And um, I drove home, or sorry, I, I'm driving back to the hotel. And as I'm driving along, um, there's two cars behind me. So I pull over because it's a one lane road and it's kind of a dirt road. And um, I'm, go I'm going, you know, the speed limit. So I, I pull over. I let these guys pass and they speed off. And besides them, that was pretty much the only cars that I had seen um, thus far really being on the road. It was pretty uh, an isolated area. So I'm driving along and driving along. And then all of a sudden the road curves and, and bends to the right. And on that downward slope, the road ceased to have any traction. Um, before that, there was tracks in the road that I was following from previous vehicles um, that you normally see on, on dirt roads. Um, there will usually be like a set of trails that, you know, set of tracks that people follow. But when I curved down that, this road, the tracks vanished and the road wasn't even gravel rocks. It became just, it, it was just packed solid rocks. So my car, not having any four wheel drive, started to hydroplane or excuse me, started to slide. Um, also because of the cross slope a little bit. I was trying to avoid hitting either side of, of the road because they had this natural dirt ditch on, on either side of the road. And I especially was trying to avoid the one to the left because 
to the left side of me, there was um, a sharp drop um, into a, a low lying farmland. And next to me was just a hillside. But um, as I would have it, um, my front wheel got stuck in that front ditch. Um, I would try to stay in the middle of the road as best I could, but the car was just so heavy. It was so heavy. And I had it for a while, but there's the, in, the, the cross slope. I just, you know, I fought it as far as I could and I hit that, that divot and the car went flying into the air and I was headed down, down the ravine, um, to this farm valley below. And I, I, I shot off and I wasn't scared at the moment. I was just thinking, okay, this is, you know, this is happening. You know, this is, this is what's happening right now. And I blacked out for a second and, um, I woke up, the vehicle was faced in the other direction and still rolling. And I remember the car rolling. Um, sorry. I remember seeing, um, on the passenger side, um, the passenger side window was directly above me. And I remember seeing that as I, as it was rolling, thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to crawl out of the window and get out of this. Um, but luckily the car kept rolling and it, it rolled upright. So, okay. Yes, it's upright. Um, I immediately tried to call their 911, but I was out in the middle of nowhere. And so that just didn't work whatsoever. And again, there hadn't been any cars that I had seen at all in a, in a really long while. So I, I knew I had to get up to the road. That, that was kind of, um, the, my first intuition that kind of came through me because I was down at this very low lying farmland surrounded by all this brush that nobody would be able to see me if a car was even going to drive by. So I, um, you know, first after I stopped rolling, you know, I, before I, before I called 911, I first, you know, checked to see if I was bleeding or if anything was broken, you know, but everything seemed fine, um, that I was alive, of course. And um, so I decided that, um, you know, I needed to, you know, get up to the road. So I, I checked the car to see if it still worked and it did. The, air, the airbag did not deploy and the car worked. And I decided that there had to be a gate somewhere that had to come in and out, out of this property um, that I could go through. Cause I'd actually shot through this, um, this metal fence gate. And, um, it, it, but going the way that I came through just wasn't an option. So I drove around and drove around the perimeter and luckily the tires, you know, were okay and saw where the gate was. It was halfway up a hill, um, you know, up to get to this, you know, up to the main area and a very, very steep hill. And so I couldn't stay in the car and just drive next to the gate and undo the latch. I actually had to physically get out of the car in my wheelchair and climb in front of the car um, to, to access it, um, which was really difficult because the ground was like quicksand, um, just super, super soft dirt. So scaling over the front of the car was difficult and I made it to um, the metal gate, um, which was about, uh, each rung was set about maybe like a foot or so apart, super, super strong and sturdy, just, I mean, wicked strong. And I was able to basically just like cliffhanger style, just like one rung at a time, scale up this fence and reach the latch, which I'm so grateful that I was able to do because I was at you know, I was right at that, that latch point where I just needed just a quarter of an inch more just to reach it. And it was just, you know, I just prayed and I'm, I'm like, this, I have to reach it. There's just nothing else that I can do. Like I have to open this, this gate. So somehow my arm has to just stretch. I have to be able to open it. And so I get it to, to open and the latch, the door comes flying back at me and almost knocks me out of my wheelchair and it doesn't. Um, but then I scale back down the, the metal fence. Um, but again, the ground's so soft that it actually sinks my back wheels and it kind of knocks me out of my wheelchair backwards. Um, I then just scoot to the car, throw the wheelchair back in, get myself back in the vehicle, 
and then look at this look at this hill in front of me and i decide to go up the hill th starting with where i where i where i'm actually located um I, it wasn't the best angle but i decided okay i'm just going to try it from here just to see so i try going up it um, don't get very far the car starts spinning and smoking so i'm like okay stop so i, I go back down move over to the area that I thought would be the best way for me to get up, you know, say a little prayer and gun it. And I get about, you know, 70% up the hill and the car starts spinning and smoking really, really bad. And so that was no good. So I decided just to, you know, take off the brake and, you know, try to get it in, in to park um, so I can just get out. And so I was able to do that. Um, I wasn't fully at the bottom of the hill, but almost at the bottom of the hill. And so I get out of my, get out of the car and um, grab my bag that had like some supplies and like a little bit of water and my seat cushion. And I had um, a jacket in my bag and I threw those items ahead of me and then would crawl to them. And then I, and then I basically got to, you know, I was on this, you know, ravine slope, which was, very very the, the ground was very very loose with with dirt but i was so incredibly grateful that um there was a lot of grass new zealand has incredible grass like just super super long and flowing and very very deeply rooted into the earth um so i, I as i was i used one arm um like a rope and i like i used the grass like a rope with one arm i was pulling and then pushing with my other hand and then I would do that for a little while and then I would flip over to my other side and I would pull the grass with one arm and then push with the other hand. It took me a while to get up the to get up the ravine, but I was again so grateful for this grass and it was a beautiful day. Could not ask for more perfect weather to be crawling in the grass and in the situation, um, which definitely made me laugh and, and crack up a little bit just because of just, you know, everything that just had happened. I was just so amazed that everything had just gone as well as it had up to this point. So I was just so incredibly grateful, you know, and I was just saying, you know, like, thank you, New Zealand. Like, thank you, New Zealand grass. Like, I, I love you. And um, I, I like, crawled up the ravine, like I said, which took a while, get up to the top. And then I take a little break and I, and I flip around and I stare at the sky and I see two hawks that are, are soaring above me. And um, in my accident that, that paralyzed me when I was 14, um, my dad was killed from it. And he often, he, he reminds me of a hawk. Whenever I see a hawk, I have this very strong connection with hawks, um, with his energy. And so um, when I saw it, when I saw these two hawks, um, I just, you know, I had this wonderful feeling of my dad that came over me and I just kind of laughed. I'm just like, okay, dad, you know, like I, you know, I did all this, like I climbed over the ravine, like I got to this point and I'm ready to be rescued now. Like, I think I'm good, you know, like I'm good. But I'm not completely out of the woods yet because I'm on top of this ravine, but I still have this big ass meadow that I still have to crawl across. So I start crawling across this meadow and I have to do that because the grass is so tall and there's a barn right in front of me and also shrubs. So if a car were to drive by, there was such a narrow window um, that, that I would be seen. Um, they would have to be looking super directly down this narrow passageway for somebody in the grass um, in order to see me that I knew I had to get to the road. Um, I was also grateful seeing the barn and there was also a shed nearby that um, I knew if I needed to spend their, you know, spend the night there, um, that was going to be a possibility. So I would have shelter. It was excellent weather. I wasn't really worried about that. Um, I was also mentally preparing myself to actually climb, um, start crawling down the road if need be the next day. So I'm crawling along the meadow and um, again, you know, like just saying, okay, yep, ready to be rescued, you know, but again, I haven't seen a car yet, like since those two cars that passed me in the very, very, very beginning. And so I'm just looking for, you know, listening for a car, listening for a car, and finally I hear a car. And so I just start screaming for help, um, which for the record, I did say help a few times on the journey, just in case there was a random farmer or person in the area that, you know, happened to hear me, but I was really out in the middle of nowhere, um, farm country. 
And so luckily this car honked, they heard me um, pulled over the side of the road and these four people came running out um, from the vehicle and as they're running, I felt a little concerned because, you know, here I was just laying on the ground. Um, I didn't want them to think that I was more injured than I was. And so I just screamed to them as they're running forward. I'm like, I'm okay. I'm paralyzed, but I'm okay. I've been paralyzed for 20 years. I'm just not standing up right now. And that's why. <laughs> and so they came running over. And they were um, government workers that were out um, measuring pond scum. So they were just out doing some research. And luckily they were out there doing that. And uh, they found me, picked me up, um, got back to the hotel, um, had the gal who um, owned and operated the hotel, who was absolutely wonderful. She helped me tremendously, you know, just calling the farmer and, you know, talking to the people like for insurance and whatnot, which I had, um, you know, the best insurance for my car rental and handed over the keys. The farmer had actually already towed the car up to the road. So the people could collect it even the next day, um, went to the doctor. The doctor was just like, yep, you're perfectly fine. You're good to go. You can get on a flight. And the next day, that's what I did. <laughs> and that's my story. <laughs> Wow, that's quite an experience. I I admire your perseverance. I don't I don't know what I would have done in that situation. Um, but I, I think we're all a little nostalgic for travel right now. So thank you for sharing that with us all. I appreciate it. Yeah, I just I guess I wanted to I mean I wanted to share just because I know we've we've persevered through so much and I guess I feel like this is just another reminder that we will persevere through this and we will out we will go out again in the world we're going to have adventures don't know exactly what that's going to look like but i guarantee you we'll, we'll travel and have adventures and have some fun definitely i love your outlook thank you again for sharing um up next we have marlena willis She um, deals with PTSD, bipolar, and Lyme disease. They lead a class in nonviolent communication over the phone for people with chronic illness and disability. They are part of a radio show on KPFA called Talk It Out Radio, which is about bringing the tools of nonviolent communication and meditation to social justice work and they will be sharing some poems with us today. Thank you. So I'm gonna share three poems. The first is called Bipolar. In dreams I would fly, sometimes peeking in the windows at sleeping neighbors, dogs nipping at my heels. Other times I faced huge cliffs and doubt, but much to my amazement, I still could fly. I would try to share this gift with others, but their disbelief would weigh them down. Also in dreams, it would be dark and I would be running and the floor would collapse. I would fall into the basement below. I would get up and run again once more. The floor would collapse and I would fall into a deeper basement, on and on, deeper and deeper until there was no floor only free fall. I love the view from high on top of a mountain, the vistas, the visions. I also love finding treasures deep in the earth of my being. I have soared high, grand le leaps to save myself and the world. I have crashed under the rocks below and curled up into a hole in the earth to heal and found gold amongst the dirt and rocks. Healing me from the horror of my wounds, they gave me medicine. I found myself on a vast treeless plain. On and on I plodded, barely able to walk. So they shifted the dose from a dollop to a dash. Now I am in rolling hills, oak trees and grass. I missed the heights, I missed the depths. Through the rolling hills, I learned to walk step by step but I still yearn to learn to fly. 
That's my poem about bipolar. And the next one is called In Sickness and Joy, and it's dedicated to Kaylin, who you'll realize who that is in a minute. When I hang out with someone I love, I find myself absorbing a bit of who she is. I find I notice and want to chase squirrels. I want to howl at sirens. I notice sense. Well, I already notice sense as I deal with disabling fatigue as the result of petrochemically based scent. Would my struggles with those who choose to wear scent be more easily resolved if I bowed slightly and started, inviting being chased or chasing, or if I sniffed their rear while letting them sniff mine? Would they understand if I growled? When I encounter someone who is safe, someone who is scent free, would my vestigial tail wag? Would we mouth each other's bodies and roll over and under one another? Have I, will I catch her joy? I hope I am contagious. One more poem. This has some similarities to the first one. So I guess that's a theme, but you'll see it's a little different. It's called fatigue. The depth and darkness of depression in its depth breeds creativity. Facing death can inspire transformation and the death itself is transformation, but the fatigue of chronic illness is infertile, like a treeless plain that goes on and on. No pretty picture postcards to send to friends. Even the small slopes of energy are filled with the rubble of past deeds undone. Invisible bars lock us into simple lives of survival. Who wants to hear about this? Who wants to read a poem about this? Yet we long to be seen and heard for what our lives are like, to be noticed for the small acts of courage when we are grateful for some little thing or when we can introduce a little humor into another painful reality. There are few crises to attract help and support, but daily there are obstacles to climb over. Boot camp, when do we get, when do we get to go on leave? take a break from this body, put the weight of tiredness down and fly. So thank you, that's all. Those were amazing, Marlena. Thank you so much for sharing. One of the comments was you were painting pictures with your words and I don't think I could say it any better than that. So thank you for sharing. Um, up next we have Karina Ho. Um, brief background on her. Um, she performed under the name Aniko. Originally a classically trained pianist, she now produces her own music, meddling soul, pop, the blues, and electronic influences. She strives to feature disability in her video work to highlight the importance of visibility of artists with disabilities in the mainstream. So whenever you're ready, um, take it away. Cool. Um, I just want to do a quick sound check because I was having some difficulties before. So if I play, can everyone hear me? Just give me a thumbs up. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I'm, this is a song that I just wrote. Uh, I, I thought it'd be, this would be a good opportunity to workshop it a little bit. So this is a little bit raw. Um, and I guess it was inspired by kind of my feelings about what's going on in the world. Um, I do have a cat on my lap. She might jump up and oh, be annoying, but um, this is a untitled song. Um, eventually, it'll probably be built a little bit more electronically, which is typically what I do with my music. And, um, oh, I guess something that may, might be interesting to some people in this, in this um, group is I used to dance with Axis Dance Company, which is an integrated dance company, uh, has people with and without disabilities. And so in my video work, I tried to integrate and show different kinds of bodies and uh, just figure for for this group that, that might be nice to see. Anyways, okay, here we go. <clears throat> Sing, burn, 
safely at the hands of a madman. We hold ourselves to the day at the coldest hour. I've climbed higher peaks in isolation to ask myself how it feels to be free and the world will never change but nothing is the same at all what came over you to ignore all the signals with our eyes wide open but in the dark is love for all the rituals overcame him the armor that she gives is his prison cell and the world will never change but nothing is the same Thank you so much. That was beautiful. The singing, the playing, very awesome. I'm excited to see more of what you do and we'll definitely be checking out your website. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Please share your website on the chat. Wonderful. Well, this has been so inspiring so far. Um, moving on, we have Eli Ramos. Um, he was a student at U Albany and a musician in the jam, jam band scene. He sustained a spinal cord injury in 2012 from a faulty balcony. He graduated from City College of New York with a degree in international relations and currently works for the mayor's office for people with disabilities, as well as in a startup company creating adaptive tools called Level the Curve. Prior to COVID, Eli was performing poetry at open mics in Spanish Harlem. So whenever you're ready, we'd love to hear from you. Well, thank you, everybody. 
to all those on the panel right now and those uh, watching to the end on the social platforms. Uh, coming to you live from New York. Uh, we were hit especially hard by this thing. Uh, I hadn't left my house for, for two months actually until the first time. Uh, and even then it was just for essentials, you know. Uh, we were just hit very hard. At one point we were the epicenter. So to, to see the other light, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, now as New Yorkers, you know, we're, we're able to sort of get out there a little more because we, again, just tried our best to follow the rules and whatever they were telling us at the time. And we're doing a lot better now. So sending a lot of love from New York to the rest of you all. Um, we'll, we'll all get through this together. Um, Having said that, again, I'm a New Yorker. Uh, I ride the train every day to get to work, which uh, is interesting to do in a wheelchair during rush hour. But nonetheless, uh, I, I seem to make it work. Um, and I get two types of reactions when I'm on the train. Uh, as a person with a disability, and I guess partly as a person with color as well, you know, it's either an intense stare, right? Or complete disregard. There's never really a middle ground. Um, so I wrote, I wrote a poem about a, an experience in particular I had on the train one morning. There's a, a, about a baker's dozen or so of uh, Girl Scouts on the train that morning. Um, just completely unfazed by, you know, the world in general, completely tuned out from, you know, all the, all the stuff that we as, as adults and, um, and such worry about on the day to day. So uh, this poem is called Watch the Gap and it's dedicated to the, the 13 or so Girl Scouts that were on the train that morning. Here it goes. On the morning train, listen through the Greek chorus of over-enthusiastic banter in the highest of frequencies. And you will hear the innocence of youth in perfect pitch, untainted without deafness of tone. Sitting across apathetic, absent-minded, busy business suits furled in their mobiles, cautiously course, composing correspondences under which they were carbon copies. The adult ABC, far removed from what they used to be. Chasing trains, buses, and dollar signs, giving up on dreams. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. I smile as I watch the gap between the Wall Street sharks and schools of fish, for I am too old for lullabies, but young enough to miss them. I'd rather their longing spares than apathy to be noticed and acknowledged with naive curiosity. Respect must be earned by those who ignored it, who call me young adults, but those who stared are the ones who received it. I am too old for lullabies, young enough to miss them, maybe old enough to sing them, but I'm busy too busy to look. Besides, I was told it was impolite to stare. Young adults, more silly little phrase. <laughs> I don't know if you guys were able to hear me, but there was an error flashing on my screen saying that my speaker wasn't working. So just give me a thumbs up if you can still hear me. We all, we all could hear you. We all could hear you. Awesome. All right. I'll, I'll read one more if that's okay. Um, it's a funny one. At least I think so. And that's a big stretch. But again, as a New Yorker, uh, Mayor de Blasio, who I work for, so let's keep this between us, um, <laughs> decided uh, to ban uh, plastic bags in New York City. So now when you go to the grocery store and, and me as a quadriplegic, I have my sufferings now because I have to carry my Trader Joe's 
uh, groceries in a paper bag, which can be kind of cumbersome in a wheelchair in urban environments. But um, yeah, if anyone has ever watched the show Seinfeld, that's the neighborhood that I live in, Upper West Side. Uh, lots of mom and pop shops and diners and all that kind of stuff. And right across Central Park, um, and a little further north, is a little neighborhood called Spanish Harlem, which is where I I perform these pieces usually, uh, you know, when we're not in a pandemic. And um, I was rolling around town, and uh, a plastic bag slapped me on the side of the wheel. And I sort of just stopped to look at it, and I thought, well, this is, I think, one of the last times I'm going to see one of you guys. So I decided to dedicate a poem, and I call it The Requiem of the Plastic Bag. It was on that windy night, I saw you again, my old terrible friend, just one word, plastic. You and I at best raced neck and neck down that Harlem street. One last hoorah before accepting defeat. An endless game of quarters and hair. You plastic bag, you ran out of air. Plastic, you beat it left and shouted, thank you for shopping here. For you were the straw that broke the turtle shell and washed the way to the gutter. For that, you are now expelled, and for that, we must all suffer. Oh, plastic, oh, plastic, your time has come. You held it together for so long. Just enough time for one more song. Hark, the herald turtle sing. Glory to the newborn king. The trees on earth are next to die. Paper eggs for all who buy. Thanks, everybody. That's, that's been me. Woo! Thank you so much, Eli. Those were really great. Um, I'm definitely going to follow you for more because they're very creative. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I'll drop some social media in the chat. Please do. Um, up next, we have Sophie Dunner. She is a joyful 17-year-old from New York City and enjoys singing and has been taking voice lessons for about three years. She's a senior at New York City Lab School and is also a member of the Lab Theater Club where she enjoys performing songs from Broadway musicals. And she'll be singing tomorrow from Annie the Musical for us tonight. Hi. Hi. I'm Sophie Dinner.
That was really good. Yeah, thank you so I much, Sophie. That. that was beautiful. Keep singing. That was that was really great. Thank you for sharing that with yeah. us. Awesome. Well, next up we have Jessica Jess Martin, who is a dancer, choreographer, public speaker, and writer. They are also a member of Momenta Dance Company and have traveled around the country with Access Dance Company and Dancing Wheels. Most recently, they participated in the Disability Culture Symposium in Michigan. They started their own company in 2017 called Exploration, which is an evening of dance, discovery, creativity, and fun that is inclusive to all abilities and individuals that may feel misrepresented in the larger dance world. And um, they are going to be performing a dance for us today. Okay, thank you everyone. First, I wanna say a big shout out to the Backbone team for creating this space for us tonight. I really appreciate it. And I would like to tell you that um, if you're interested in finding out more about either Momenta or or my company, you're more than welcome to. There's a link, um, a handle actually, on Facebook. It's Exploration17, um, and you can find us through there. The name of the, the Facebook page is Explore With Me. I developed that through the, because we were supposed to have a show. Um, but I did that so we could have an online presence. And last night, actually, was our first virtual class in exploration. So we always do, from now until September 12th, we're running a, we're running a workshop. So if you would like more information, just reach out to me and I'll get that for you. But I would like to also start with a, visual description of myself. Um, I'm wearing black pants and I also have my hair up in a bun with a bright silver top and um, a very decorative um, chair. I also have a face painting of a rainbow and a star um, on my forehead because the name of my piece tonight is going to be uh, Reach for the Stars. Without further ado, hold on one second, I'll be right there. I'm 
so much Jess that was really awesome I enjoyed watching you you're very creative and I love the whole look too thank you 
Well, last but not least, we have one performance left and it's by Esther Lee. Esther is an attorney with a disability affecting her speech and mobility, but not her spirit. She graduated from the University of California Davis School of Law with a focus on civil rights and public interest law. In addition to being an attorney, she's starting a nonprofit housing cooperative for people with and without disabilities called ABLE Community and will be performing poems for us today. Ooh. Hello. There's an elephant living upstairs stomp, 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 stomping all night long. He must be one angry elephant with all that non-stop stomping, stomp, 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 stomping all day long. He must be one mean old elephant with all that non-stop stomping, stomp, stomp, stomp. I have to do something to stop this stomp, stomp, stomping. Knock, knock, knock. Excuse me, Mr. Elephant. What's with all the stomp? Stomp, stomping, Mr. Elephant said, as he quivered and shivered. There's a mouse living in my house. I'm afraid she'll eat me or beat me. I'm stomp, stomp, stomping to get her out. Out, out. Have you tried talking to her? Instead of stomp, stomp, stomping, I asked. Why? I never thought of that, he said. But I am so afraid she'll eat me or beat me. I would never eat you or beat you, said a timid voice from behind the wall. Won't you come out of your house? Ms. Mouse. Ms. Mouse quivered and shivered, saying I'm afraid of all that stomp. Stomp. Stomping and that he would stomp. Stomp. Stomp me to death. I would never stomp. Stomp. Stomp Ms. Mouse to death, said Mr. Elephant. When Ms. Mouse came out, quivering and shivering, she saw Mr. Elephant was just a baby elephant, and Mr. Elephant saw how nice Ms. Mouse really was. We all became friends, having cheese and peanut tea parties, and the non-stop stomp, stomp, stomping stopped, stopped, stopped ever since. The next three poems are from a collection of poetry I'm working on, called Searching for Kadesh. Body breaking, gradual erosion of my muscles within muscles and my bones within bones expedited underneath my blood browned, once cream dress, tattered and torn, age eroding by elements, rock formations crumble, mountains move slowly dying, dull, sharp, intense, sneezes, coughing dirt, any sudden movement spread lightning throughout my body. Snake slithers down and up and down my neck, shoulders, back, tailbone. Reeking war, wrecking, deprecating flesh. Cold wind enters my bones. Coldness sticks. Stiffness stays inside. Thunder lighting Moses' entrance. Outside heat helps relax, relieving tight hurts. Hard hurts. Soft hurts. 
Bart digging my back, doesn't find what it's looking for. Sharp, intense, dull, heaviness deep inside my back, below my neck, inside my shoulder, where bone meets bone, bruises blue black beaten under the Red Sea, thunder lighting Moses' exit, resting on easy uncomfortableness, knife cuts me inside out, intense, dull, sharp. Why not end my misery? Is this prolonged torture humane? Monstra, monstra, monstra. That's what people call us. Monstra, monstra. They point at us and stare. Monstra, monstra. They dare not be seen with us. Monstra, monstra, or even look us in the eye. Monstra, monstra. I bet they go home and snicker. Monstra, monstra using us to warn their young monstra. Monstra is how not to live their lives. Monstra, monstra. Who cares what they think? Monstra, monstra. Let them look at us and stare. Monstra, monstra. Let them go home and snicker. Who are the real monstra? Monstra living within their souls. Star, a silver sliver speck in the early night sky. Fading pale blue. Constant presence above the clouds busy gliding away. The smallest glimpse glimmering of hope. The end. Those were wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm really inspired by your poetry. Well, that was our last performer. Um, I think this was an amazing event. I'm so inspired by all of your creativity and I am so appreciative that you were willing to share it with everyone. Um, I think the showcase showed how um, strong and amazing the disability community really is. Um, so thank you all for being a part of our first open mic event and I hope that there is many more. Um, I don't want to take too much more of your time just because we are a little bit over but Backbone does have um, upcoming events so you can check us out on backbonesonline.com and if you have any questions or would like to get in touch you could email me or Rebecca and we would be happy to answer them. Um, Rebecca do you have anything you'd like to add before we sign off? Uh, I just want to say that that was awesome. Um, I Like I mentioned in the comments it's just awesome to see um, disability, art, and culture, and such variety in today's performances. Thank you for sharing that with us, um, and we hope to do it again soon if you guys all loved it. Yeah, I also just wanted to say it's crazy what you guys were able to do. Like, I don't think I would ever have that much talent. Um, just, like, really inspiring how much you guys did and how well it was done, how well it was executed. And I just put everyone back on the screen just so everyone can see. Whoops, did that go away? There we go. There. There. Just wanted to show one picture of everyone who participated today. So thank you. Yeah, if everyone could just smile or put a thumbs up, I'm gonna take a <laughs> screenshot. You send us like people's um, information if we want to get in touch with people. Yeah, we will be posting, we've been posting all of your links um, on the Facebook feed and this has been recorded tonight. So if anyone wants it, we will share it with the panelists and the attendees as well. Okay, thank you very much. And I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Have a great night. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Take care.